Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back, of course, to the Time Bomb channel. Hope all is good in your part of the world, and we've got a, a semi-venerable old uh, Seiko on the channel, so 7002. Um, strikes me that, you know, when you look at people's watch collections, if they're a bit of a watch nutter, one of the ones that most of us will have in our boxes um, is one of these, uh, you know, old models. Might be an old turtle, um, you know, an old monster, an early monster, or a 6105. Um, so I picked this one up on Fleabay, and the rationale for buying it is that I wanted to run a couple of instructional videos or how-tos or tutorials, as I get quite a few technical questions asked, and they're not always easy to answer um, in the uh, chat box down below or via email, etc. So I thought, let's grab one of these old things, these working things, and get it running. However, as I started filming, I've noticed that this one um, is not. It was sold as um, working and stopping. But I'm struggling to get the uh, to get it to move. I'm pretty sure these aren't these these aren't winders. Uh, these movements. Anyway, the other uh, reason for wanting to do that is that one of my very good chums has just completed his British Horological Association qualification. So we're going to be uh, putting his skills to the test. Let me just zoom in a little bit. All right, so we're a little little close up uh, view on our watch. Now, I tried modding uh, before. I think it was one of my very early videos. I tried modding a Vostok Amphibia. I really enjoyed it, but I failed um, essentially because the, the externals, everything that I changed on the externals worked well and it looked great. But somehow I managed to to damage the winder and it's those tiny screws uh, inside that held it in place. Yada, yada, yada. I spoiled the project. Someone has already started to look at this one because one of the things that, um, that was stated on the, uh, on the, by the seller was that the uh, bezel insert had been replaced. So it's, it's, it's not as dinged as the rest of the watch. The uh, crystal though here, as you can see, quite quite heavily marked, lots of scratches, so it hasn't been repolished, which I think is a really good thing. Um, I think also it's it's really tough to find these in in, in, your, in their original condition because most of them have been we call it looked after um, in one way or another. They're an absolute favourite of modders who snap these things up and then you know change all the uh, colourways and, and and sex them up in in many ways. Um, so my thought is that you might need to drop the puritanical approach to these watches, pick one up that you like the look of, um, and then and then go from there. Um, cost for this one uh, for me was seventy pounds. Um, so yeah, it's it's an easy easy project uh, to to get you or to cut your teeth on, or um, you know, just a nice nice little watch to uh, to to keep alive. Quick bit of background on the seven zero. 7002 series in case these are new to you of course they they sort of sit the series release sat between or before the skx and after the 6000s with the first ones of these being released in 1988 and then running i think until it was 1996 this particular one from our uh, ref on the back then hails from 1991 these are then 42 or 41 mils across depending on how you know which point you measure it with those uh, crown guards um a very manageable 45 mils north to south uh 12.7 mils uh deep and then a you know the right size 22 mils uh lugs meaning that this little watch is going to sit very very well on you know almost everyone's wrist uh, might look it might look a little small if you're an eight and a half inch wrist but everybody else i think this <laughs> it really does sit very very well indeed the early ones then, my understanding as well, ran 150 metres worth of watery goodness with the ones much later on then moving up to 200, which got them a little closer to that uh, the SKX specs. I mean, looking particularly at this one, as I say, before that it'd been somebody had already started looking after it, everything else that I can see and I can identify on mostly appears to be genuine, all right? The dial details look uh, correct. We've got the little flash of lightning down the bottom there. Uh, we've got the same mirrored on the back. Um, the dual edge is indicated in the right place. Um, the markers and everything else seem to be correct. Um, the hands, however, um, to me look a little bit cleaner um, than obviously the markers. It could be that they've been uh, relumed or cleaned. We'll, we'll find out later on. Um, 
the crown and bezel uh, also. So the crown to me, it should be, you know, is that quite a big fat one? Sits those those crown guards as well, look correct. That seems all right. Um, as I say, the bezel itself from the side, I think also looks correct. Um, but again, I'm sure someone might point out that it's a misfit. I'm okay with that because as I say, my objective here was not to buy a perfect one. I wanted to buy one that we could clean up and, and use a little bit as a demonstrator. Um, however, if you are keen on trying to find one of these, you know, in as original condition as possible, um, I'll pop a link to a thread that I found on what you seek. Uh, where one of the guys there has given an, an incredible amount of detail on what to look for on these in order to try and identify how uh, genuine it actually is. The loom on these 7002s is known to be a bit pants. Um, it's, you know, everybody knows that it's a bit grainy and grey. That's if yours is, is shining like a traffic light, you know, then you can probably take that as an indication it's been upgraded. I like the, the one of the reasons why I chose this particular uh, old Seiko is that I like the lack of complexity on the dial. Um, you know, the, the, the batons, you know, the, the, so those, those little stubby uh, markers with the, uh, you know, the needle hands, you know, the slightly oversized arrowhead on the, the minute marker. I think, you know, it makes it very, very clear uh, to read and very unfussy. And I think just the 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 but the, the concept of the of the single date window there as, as opposed to the full day date again just sort of keeps it a little bit clearer. A little splash of colour there with the water resist also. So what are we going to do with this one? Well, first thing we're going to do is dismantle it. We're then going to run everything through a sonic cleaner to get the gunge off. Um, we're then going to reassemble uh, the watch. I've got some new gaskets um, of to go with this as well. And then we're going to do some basic maintenance vids. You know how to replace the crystal because as you can see this one on here is quite heavily marked and grainy. Yeah, it's a bit of a mess. So that I think will definitely be one of those. Um, we're not going to do the polishing on the case body because I think those dings on there just add to its appeal. And it would just look, yeah, just look wrong, I think. Um, also do, I mean, for my own benefit as well, you know, better tutorial on how to disconnect and reconnect the winder. Um, probably do something else with the bezel also. Um, yeah. If there's something particularly uh, that, of course, you'd like to see us doing with these, you know, regulation. So obviously this one, may it may start working again after it's been cleaned and reassembled. Um, obviously my chum then, you know, will be able to see inside and he he'll make the necessary adjustments to get this thing working again. But as I say, if there's something you'd like to see or you'd like to learn how to do with these things, then please do drop us a comment down below and we'll see if we can't get it done. I mean, yeah, just moving this bezel around to say, yeah, it might, again, it might need a new spring in there. It's a little, a little clunky, but again, it's from 1991. It's, it's, you know, it's had a good life and it's probably had some heavy use. So uh, yeah, we're certainly going to forgive it for that. Other than that, just a, a quick intro to the uh, the plans with this one. As I say, we're going to be videoing all of that that work and I'll probably narrate over the top all the different bits and pieces that's happening. So we'll be dropping those in between the uh, watch reviews over the, over the next couple of months. Thanks as always for your time and for your view, guys. And of course, until the next bit, this is your host, the Bombardier, signing off. Cheers, guys. Mm -hmm.